For the first time in the history of modern humanity, the magnetic North Pole jumps to the South Pole and vice versa. Our world will be upside down for some time, and scientists are meticulously trying to find out what the impending magnetic pole jump will mean for the Earth. What is certain is that the development can no longer be stopped. The signs are alarming, and the pole shift may have already begun. Magnetic pole shifts, also known as geomagnetic reversals, have occurred relatively frequently in the history of the Earth, albeit on geological timescales so that the phenomenon is normal for the Earth, but a rarity for us humans. Magnetic pole reversals probably occur on average every 200,000 to 300,000 years. The last completed pole reversal took place about 780,000 years ago. This reversal, known as the Bruns Matsuyama reversal, occurred an unusually long time ago. It's about time. Scientists say the next pole reversal could have already begun. If the magnetic North Pole jumps to the South Pole and vice versa, the Earth's magnetic field changes dramatically. In the course of the jump, it even shows extreme weaknesses for a certain period of time. During this time, our civilization is exposed to an increased risk for solar storms. Normally, the magnetic field reliably intercepts the particle streams from the Sun, but when it weakens, more charged solar particles can penetrate into the deep layers of the Earth's atmosphere and possibly cause damage. If we then also experience a peak in solar activity, as is currently the case, it could become really dangerous. Experts warn that a gigantic solar storm could paralyze our entire modern civilization. Duration of a pole shift, 1,000 to 10,000 years. It sounds eerie and fascinating at the same time. A pole shift means a complete magnetic reversal of our planet. North becomes south and vice versa. We humans have never consciously experienced this process and we do not know what a pole shift will be like. It may feel like nothing changes or we may experience major disruptions and possibly massive failures of technical equipment. The magnetic field is not absolutely essential for us humans to live or let's put it this way. The effects of the Earth's magnetism on us humans have hardly been researched, if at all. Scientists assume that animals use the magnetic field for orientation, and as already mentioned, the field protects us from the solar particle streams. These currents wouldn't be a problem for the globe, even if they occur at longer intervals and in concentrated bursts. Again, it's our modern human culture that is at risk due to our dependence on technology. Animals and the planet itself can usually withstand such changes very well. A pole shift is probably not a sudden process. It may take place over 1,000 to 10,000 years. During this time, the magnetic field weakens and becomes more chaotic, with the poles repeatedly shaking or wandering erratically before realigning. Pole jumps occur as a result of changes in the flow patterns of the liquid metal in the outer core. This is where the magnetic field is generated by an effect that scientists call geodynamo. Influenced by thermal convection, the rotation of the Earth and possibly other factors from space, the polarity of this geodynamo changes and the orientation of the poles changes with it. Current processes in the Earth's magnetic field are alarming. The Earth's magnetic field is currently changing in a remarkable way. Over the last 200 years, the magnetic field has lost about 10% of its strength. It is observed with concern that the magnetic field continues to lose strength, and the rate of this decrease seems to be increasing. For some time now, there has been a region with a severely weakened magnetic field over the South Atlantic. This anomaly is growing daily and, in the worst case, will spread to form a gigantic hole. In this region, satellites and electronic devices are already increasingly exposed to cosmic radiation, and nobody knows where this development will lead. In the North, strange changes have been observed since the 1990s. Since then, the magnetic North Pole has been moving faster and faster. From a few kilometers per year, the rate increased to around 50 to 60 kilometers per year. At the moment, the magnetic North Pole is approaching Siberia, this still sounds extremely northern to us, but there is a considerable distance between the original North Pole and its current position. Scientists distinguish between several poles. Our Earth has a North Pole, which, 
measured along the Earth's axis, is almost invariable. Although our planet has experienced axial shifts in its history, these events are less frequent than magnetic reversals. Of course, our globe also has a purely geological North Pole at the top of the Northern Hemisphere. The magnetic North Pole is determined by the pure rotation of the Earth's magnetic field. Traditionally, all these poles deviate slightly from one another and do not lie synchronously at one point. The magnetic pole is the most active and it wanders the most. The magnetic field does not envelop our Earth statically. It wafts, circulates, and fluctuates. False alarm, are we experiencing a supercron? Some scientists are skeptical. Are we really facing a pole shift or is it all just fear-mongering? The last pole jump about 780,000 years ago was a long time ago, considering that such events occur on average every 200,000 to 300,000 years. Scientists suspect that such periods without a pole jump are just as normal as cycles of several hundred thousand years. There have been demonstrably phases in the Earth's history in which no pole jump occurred for several million years. Researchers refer to such phases as supercron, and we could be in the middle of one of these periods. During the Cretan supercron, the Earth's magnetic field remained stable for about 30 million years. We could currently be in a similar but shorter phase. The tremor of the North Pole would then be a normal fluctuation and not a sign of a complete leap. The reasons for an unusually long stability of the Earth's magnetic field could be geodynamo mechanisms. The outer core of the Earth could be in a particularly stable phase, whereby the flow patterns in the liquid iron are currently hardly disturbed. Some researchers convincingly argue that geomagnetic reversals are chaotic and difficult to predict. So long pauses are not unusual. They say that without further evidence, it's not possible to confidently predict a pole reversal for the next 10,000 years. What would a pole shift mean for our civilization? During a pole shift, the Earth's magnetic field will definitely weaken, which could mean that the Earth is temporarily less protected from radiation from space. This could weaken nature and perhaps also our bodies in some ways. The exact effects of a sharp decline in the magnetic envelope of our planet have not been sufficiently researched. However, it's certain that technological systems such as satellites and communication networks would be disrupted by the radiation. In addition to disruptions to communication systems, we could experience power outages. It's possible that more animals will stray into areas where they do not belong. Whales beaching themselves on shores is just as likely as large flocks of birds getting lost. Nobody knows how quickly animals will adapt to the new conditions, and whether their internal navigation systems might adapt more quickly to the new orientation of north and south than our systems do. The extent to which a pole shift would affect the weather and climate is currently the subject of heated debate. We simply don't know what would happen if the magnetic south became the magnetic north and vice versa. What is certain at the moment is that a pole shift would pose a considerable challenge for our high-tech society. Scientists are currently monitoring every change closely so that they can assess possible risks at an early stage. How did the Earth's magnetic field come about? It's actually a miracle. The Earth's magnetic field enables our planet to have an atmosphere and thus allows us to live. Planets without a magnetic field, such as Mars, lose their atmosphere if they ever had one. The geodynamo inside our planet is therefore a real stroke of luck. Inside the Earth, the rotation causes electrically conductive liquid metal to be shaken back and forth, creating magnetic forces. The Earth's core consists of a solid, metallic inner core and a liquid outer core. Iron and nickel in the Earth's outer core are melted by extreme heat from the inner core. A type of convection current causes the liquid metal to circulate, similar to boiling water. The liquid iron is conductive and its movement generates electrical currents. These currents, in turn, generate a magnetic field. The Earth's rotation forces these convection currents into spiral patterns. Scientists know this effect as the Coriolis force. Once generated, the magnetic field amplifies the movements in the liquid metal, creating a stable cycle that maintains the geodynamo. The result is a global magnetic field surrounding the Earth like a giant bar magnet, 
forming magnetic north and south poles. These processes have been well-researched and plausibly explained by science. Despite this rationality, our magnetic field is a scientific miracle. It seems perfectly orchestrated, and without it, our world would not be what it is. The magnetosphere protects the Earth from the solar wind. The Earth's magnetic field deflects the solar wind so that it cannot directly hit the atmosphere. The solar wind literally compresses the magnetic field on the side facing the sun. On the side facing away from the sun, on the other hand, the solar wind stretches the magnetic field, creating a long tail known as a magnetotail. Despite this almost perfect protective shield, the Earth collects larger quantities of solar particles at the North and South Poles and binds them in pocket-like fields. These areas were named after their discoverer as the Van Allen radiation belts. In 1958, the astronomer James Van Allen saw for the first time how charged particles of the solar wind are captured and bundled by the magnetic field. Once trapped, these particles travel along the magnetic field lines from one pole to the other, slowly losing their charge. The inner layers of the Earth's atmosphere thus remain perfectly protected. If particles do manage to escape, exceptional conditions such as the Carrington event can arise. During this gigantic solar storm, people in the 19th century experienced one of the strongest geomagnetic storms of modern times. The sky seemed to be ablaze with a play of colors and sparks were flying from the fledgling telegraph installations. The leakage of normal particle streams into the Van Allen rings, when intense enough, produces a play of colors that we know as aurora or polar light. The aurora borealis forms the northern lights, and the aurora australis creates the southern lights. Normally, these phenomena can only be observed in the extreme north or south. In 2024, the particle bombardment from the sun towards the Earth was so intense that the northern lights could be seen well into the interior of the land masses. Some auroral lights shone as far as the Mediterranean region. People on the tropical Pacific island of Hawaii saw the spectacle for the first time with their own eyes, and in the south, People in Australia and even in South Africa were delighted by the unusual polar lights. Click the subscribe button now to be the first to see all our new videos.